tender document. A tender is an invitation from an employer sent out to potential contractor to bid for a project. This employer can be any parties that wishes to call for a project and willing to finance the project. This party can be large organizations, government bodies, companies, and non-profit organizations. Typically, there is a need by the employer wishing to acquire a building or infrastructure which the employer itself cannot produce by their own and thus the employers are looking for the contractors to help them for the project. During the process of inviting the contractors for the project, the employer is looking for people who have the expertise and the capability offering the relevant services which at the same time offering competitive price to the employer so that the employer can maximize the value of the money spent for the project. This leads to a process of tendering where the employer calls for the tender, sending invitations to the potential contractor and the contractors who are interested will bid the price for the project based on the specifications and details given in the tender document. This will help the employer to select qualified and interested contractor based on certain contract criteria in pursuing the best value of money for the intended project. This is a necessary process to ensure win-win situations between two parties that involve the employers and the contractor. The employer requires contractor to help them with the construction and the employer will finance the entire process. In return, the employer should acquire whichever quality and specifications as per stated in the contract based on the contract sum agreed between the employer and the contractor. At the same time, contractors looking for a project so that they can offer their services, which in return, the contractor got paid for all the cost of constructions as well as the services provided. The employers get the opportunity to choose a contractor that the employer deems to be qualified at the contract sum which the employer feel worth it and due to the open competitions among different contractors it will be up to the contractor to offer for the best price so that they get higher chance to be employed for providing the services as a result it is likely that the contractor will provide reasonable price for the services provided to the employer, which at the end of the day, the employer gets the best value of money and the contractor gets the project and get paid for their services. Now let us look at the stages of the tender process. In general, there are four main stages. This include pre-qualifications, the issue of tender documents, receive and review the tenders, and award of the contract. Let us look into these stages one by one. At the pre-qualification stages, the employer will need to identify the contractors who are qualified and would be interested in tendering for the project. This might include certain surveys, seeking for the potential contractors who have relevant track record with good reputations and having the ability to provide the services or having the expertise to carry out the project, meeting the standards and requirements 
by the employer. Once the potential contractors are identified, the tender documents will be issued. In this tender document, information and details regarding the project will be provided. This includes the conditions to the tender procedures, the contract conditions between the employer and the successful tenderer, as well as the detailed information regarding the project, for example, the project design, elements of words, data, and etc. The purpose of having this information to be disclosed it is to avoid ambiguities where every single aspect are clearly stated out, made known to the potential contractors upfront in order to minimize the misunderstanding and also the potential disputes arises due to ambiguities. It also provides the details of the project as the basis for the contractors to work out the cost of the constructions so that the contractor can bid for the project. At this stage, the contractor acquired the tender document, do some homework and planning, look into the details of the project to know the scope of work, the standards and requirements, the quantities of the works and materials, for them to estimate the cost of the constructions and bid for a price for the employer to consider. Then the contractor will submit the tender document back to the employer and this brings into the next stage which is the receipt and review of tenders. Normally, there are deadlines of the submissions by the contractors and this is normally clearly stated in the conditions to the tender procedures as well as the policy guideline as established by the employer. Now that the employer has received the tender as submitted by the contractor, the employer will review the tenders and decide on which contractor has the capability and resources to meet the stipulated requirements. Typically, there will be more than one contractor bidding for the project and the employer will need to study through the tender document as submitted by different contractors, making comparison in terms of their proposal as well as the proposed cost of the construction and to decide which contractors is suitable for the project. The employer may not necessarily choose for the contractors who offer the cheapest price among all. You know that the cost is not the only criteria or the only considerations by the employers. There are also other factors, including the track record of the employers, as well as others. You know that in the reality, there are many contractors claims to have the ability to complete the project, which sometimes can be a bit bogus, especially in the process of pursuing for a project. This will very much depend on the wisdom of the employer, to filter those contractors that obviously do not have the abilities to carry out the project or to avoid the contractors that have bad reputations in terms of the competency, professionalisms or ethical aspects. The employer will have to choose the suitable contractor carefully because once the project is awarded and when the contract is formed, the employer will have to abide to the contracts. There will be roles and responsibility by the employer as well as the liability to bear the consequences 
in the case that dispute happen between the employers and the contractors. Now, if the employer has decided who is going to carry out the project, the contract will be awarded. In selections of a suitable contractor, these are some considerations such as the risk evaluations, best value contract, quality, options and incentives, ongoing maintenance, or longer project lifespan. That's why the lower price may not necessarily be the most advantageous.